Hello and welcome to part 37 with Easter Tonight Ease Wonder 2.7. In this video and the next video, we're going to be creating a more advanced armature or skeleton rig for a Minecraft character. Now, if you want to follow along with me in this video and the next video, you can go ahead and download the exact file that I'm starting with in this video in the description area below. So in the last few videos in this tutorial series, I've created a Minecraft character, made an armature, in other words, a skeleton for it, attached the skeleton to the mesh, the blocks of the character. We've done some weight painting and we've done some UV mapping and texture painting, and we've added the texture onto the character. That's all good and great, but this is a very, very simple, very amateur rig. The reason why I say that is because it's an FK, that means a forward kinematics rig. Now, what is that? Well, a forward kinematics rig basically constrains you to having to move each individual bone to the space or the location or rotation where it's going to be. Ideally, what I want to be able to do is, let's say, grab his hand or lower arm bone and just drag it up and have the whole arm just kind of move along with it. Unfortunately, that's not possible right now. I press the G key with that bone selected only that bone moves. I can't pose the character like I would, let's say, a rag doll or a puppet, or if I grab the hand, the arm would just sort of follow along with it. To pose this character, let's say, with his arm up, I would have to drag or grab this bone first and rotate it and then pose this one. So you have to go through a process, through a forward process. That means from the parent all the way down to the child. In other words, in this case, we're going from the upper arm, which is the parent, a lower arm. We have to start with the upper arm first and move our way that way. Well, with an inverse kinematics rig, you can just do exactly what I described. You can grab, let's say, a hand bone and pull up and the entire rest of that arm will follow along and you can pose it much, much simpler. Same thing with the feet and legs, of course. And the benefit of having an IK rig is not only being able to pose your character quicker, in other words, being able to animate your character faster, it also allows um, you to do walking animation where the feet don't slip and slide as much um, and that makes it much more easier. So let's go ahead and get started. Now right now I'm in pose mode and I've posed my character in a funny way. So I'm going to press A and A and then press Alt R and Alt G and Alt S to clear out the rotation, movement and scaling of any of the bones that I've done. And I'm going to go back into object mode of my armature. Now what I need to point out here is that when we parented the mesh to the armature and we selected with automatic weights, it made a bunch of vertex groups in our mesh so that the mesh knew which vertices were attached to which bones. The way we can actually see that list is by going over here with our mesh selected to the object data tab. And if you haven't been here before, this is where it describes lots of the things to do with the groups of vertices in your mesh. Now there is a section here called vertex groups and as you can see there is a group called spine and a group called head and a group called bone and then I didn't actually name most of my bones in that tutorial but as you can see it created a group of vertices for each bone. So if we go into edit mode by pressing the tab key of course and then go into vertices select mode and press A a few times to deselect everything. If I click on the vertex group named spine and I click on select, it's gonna select all of the bones that were connected to the spine. Now I think this exact file that I'm working on is not a very good version because it's selected part of the legs as well. Uh, maybe this is the version before I did weight painting, uh, but that's okay because we're actually gonna go ahead and delete all of these groups. Before we do that, I also have to point out that when you parent a mesh to a armature, it actually adds a modifier under the wrench tab to your mesh. It's called the armature modifier. And we're gonna go ahead and delete that because we no longer want these bones to control that mesh. Okay, I'm gonna flip back over to my object edit tab and I'm just gonna go ahead and select all my groups and click on minus a few times to get rid of those vertex groups. So now if I go back into pose mode of my armature, the armature does not control any part of the mesh. In fact, I'm gonna delete this whole armature so I'll go back into object mode and press the X key and we'll, we're going to get rid of it. My character is still on the zero, zero mark or the zero mark, especially on the X axis. That's important. I haven't moved it up and down or side to side, especially. 
um, and not forward and back, so that's a good thing. I want my 3D cursor, this thing, to be in the middle, so I'll press Shift-C on my keyboard, and we're going to add a new armature. Now, in this video, we're going to be setting up the armature um, so that we can create the advanced rig, and then in the next video, we'll be attaching the armature to the mesh. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and press Shift-A and add a new armature. I'm adding a single bone here, of course, and the first thing we do as soon as we add the armature right between his feet at zero on the x-axis is we go up to the armature tab or the person tab and we click on x-ray under the display section. My bone is now uh, right in the middle, I can see it, but it is right in the middle of the body. I'm going to move it up so that it is right where his pelvis is going to be. And I'll press tab to go into the bones edit mode and zoom in and grab the tail nub or the tail orb and drag it straight up on the Z axis. Now, in the last rig that we created, you saw that we only had one bone for the spine. That's not ideal for a more advanced rig. What we want to do here is actually have a few separate bones so he can actually bend his body because if we're animating him, of course, he might want to reach down and bend his knees and pick something up off the ground. And to do that, he might want to bend his back a little bit. Now, your back is made up of a bunch of spine bones, um, and you have a pelvis and a rib cage. And if you take some time and learn animation, especially for characters, you'll know that you don't actually bend very much in your rib cage area. You bend mostly in your lower um, torso area, in the lower part of your spine, and then your torso is sort of a larger bone that comprises your hips. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to divide this into three sections, a rib section, a spine section, and a pelvis section. So I'll press T to bring up my tool shelf. That'll be important in a sec, and I'll press W and click on subdivide. When you subdivide, of course, you only get two bones. And so I'm gonna make one more cut over here. I only made one cut, so I'm gonna make two. And there we have it. Now, I wanna kinda of rearrange these, so I'm gonna drag the pelvis nub down a little bit. And then the rib cage is, of course, the biggest section here. So I'll drag that section down. If you wanna make a slightly different ratio, uh, that's perfectly okay. But I think the spine's gonna be the lowest section and the pelvis and ribs will be the larger. Let's go ahead and name these bones. So I'm gonna select this bone and I'll go to my bone tab. I'm gonna call this ribs and I'm gonna name this section spine and I'll name this lower section uh, pelvis and I'll press enter. Let's go ahead and make the head bone. This character has no neck, so that makes it a little bit easier for us. I'll select this nub and press E and then I'll tap Z on my keyboard or Z and I'll drag it up and click. So now we have a head bone. I'll go to the bone tab and name that head. Now, let's go ahead and create some arms, uh, but this process is gonna look a little bit different than you remember from the last few videos. I wanna actually have a shoulder or the ability for him to, let's say, shrug in this version of my rig. So I'm not gonna create a separate bone over here. I'm going to just keep on extruding from that nub right there. And because we're extruding from the tail nub of the rib cage, the shoulder will now be a child of this rib cage bone. So if you move the rib cage, the shoulders will follow suit. Um, so basically, the shoulders will be a sibling or an equal level of hierarchy to the head. So let's go ahead and uh, select that nub and press E on my keyboard and bring it out to the left side of him or from our view, the right side. And I'm going to drag this nub just sort of over here. We want to position this very, very carefully. I'm going to position it in the middle of this um, arm. So I'm actually going to press tab to go back into object mode, select the rig or the mesh rather, and I'll press tab to go into edit mode. Now in the last video series or the last few videos, we made the arm start at the very top of his shoulder. That was probably not a good idea. I want to make it more towards the middle of this, basically the square here. Uh, so not right at the top, that'll stop or prevent him from being able to move his arm away from his uh, his body uh, more uh, more easily. So let's go ahead and go into edge select mode. And I'm going to hold control and alt on my keyboard and click on this edge. And that will let me select that whole uh, edge ring as opposed to an edge loop. If I press Z on my keyboard, you can see what it's selected. So again, control, alt, and right click on this edge. And I'm going to press shift S. And of course, that brings up my snapping menu. It's the shift S key or the keyboard shortcut, and I'm going to select cursor to selected right there. That's going to snap that 3D cursor right to the middle of that section, and of course, it becomes perfectly centered like that. 
Let's press tab to go back into object mode. I'll press Z again so we can see our mesh. And I want to snap this little tail nub to that 3D cursor so we know it's exactly in the middle. So tab to go back into edit mode of the armature. And then with that nub selected, shift S and selection to cursor. It'll snap to where that 3D cursor is. So now it's right in the middle of his uh, arm. Now the arm is gonna be more advanced, of course, um, than the last armature that we made. In the last armature, we only had two bones. I'm actually gonna have three sections to this arm. He's gonna have an upper arm, a lower arm, and a hand. Um, and then we're gonna to have to add a few more bones to act as the controller or IK targets. So with that nub selected, I'll press E and then Z on my keyboard and drag this straight down. And that looks pretty good to me. Of course, we wanna make one bone and then subdivide it. That'll make it easier for us. I'll select that arm bone and press W and subdivide. And I wanna make three sections here. So I'll turn my number cuts up to two. Now, I kinda of have to decide where my hand is gonna start and the where the elbow is gonna be. I want my hand to be quite short, actually. So I'm gonna move it down to read about there. And I wanna kind of gauge, you know, if this is where the hand starts and therefore I have a whole section up here, where is the elbow joint gonna be? And I think that's actually okay, maybe a little bit farther down. Uh, it's really up to you. Uh, actually, I think I'll make, because this upper arm section has some area that doesn't have bone, that still counts as that upper arm section. So I wanna kind of divide from here all the way up to here in two, and that looks about right to me, maybe even a little more farther up. It seems weird that this section would be shorter, but that's just the way it's gonna be. Let's go ahead and name these bones. So I'm gonna name the shoulder bone, and this is the naming convention that you should use in Blender. Uh, I've got my bone tab open. I'm gonna name it shoulder. The important thing here is to name it dot L. This is his left side, but we're looking at him from an opposite direction, so it looks like it's his right, but it is his left. If you were him, that would be your left shoulder. Um, so dot capital L, that's very important. So I'll name this one arm upper dot L, and this one will be arm lower dot L, and this one will be hand dot L. Now there are a few more bones that we need to create in order to make IK work. When you're making an IK rig, and we're gonna set it up with the proper IK constraints in the next video, before we do that though, we have to make a few more bones to act as targets. Now, one thing we wanna do is create a hand target that is not the hand bone itself. So what I'm gonna do is actually go back up to the wrist um, joint, and I'm gonna make a second hand. But in order for us to not make it uh, confusing, what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna change the shape of the bones. So under the object data tab, or the person tab, I'm gonna go down to the display section, and instead of this oct, I can't even say that word, octahedral, yeah, that's what it's called, um, display mode, which is the shape of the bone, I'm gonna go with B bones, and B bones are basically just blocks with the same orbs on the end. The reason why I'm gonna do this is because I wanna make all these bones quite a bit skinnier, and then I'll make the target bones fatter so that they are easier to see and easier to grab uh, from any angle. So I'm gonna press A and A to select all of my bones, still in edit mode, and to make them narrower, what you can do is you can press Control alt s Let's Control alt s and then you can move your mouse inwards and make them skinnier or, of course, uh, thicker. So I'm gonna make them a little bit skinnier than they were before. Great. Now let's go ahead and make that second hand. It's gonna be called the IK target for the hand or hand IK dot L. So I'll grab that little nub and I'll press E and then Z on my keyboard, we're gonna drag it down just a little bit farther so we can still grab it if we need to. And I'm gonna select it and we're gonna make this version thicker. So I'll press Control Alt S and I'll drag it out and make it a little bit uh, thicker. And I'm gonna name this bone uh, under the bone tab, we're gonna name it hand IK dot L. Now you might be wondering how could I select the original hand if I wanted to? Well, what we can do here is, of course, you could press Z on your keyboard to go into wireframe mode, but then we can't see the mesh itself. So I'll press Z again. What I want to do here is actually make my bones display as wireframe, but have everything else still display with the correct display mode, depending on what I have selected here. So what I'll do is, with any bone selected, 
I'll go to my object tab in the properties window and here you can actually declare with the selected object what the maximum draw type you want to be for that object. So it's under the display section. Right now the maximum is textured, which is pretty high. We're gonna change it down to wire. So right now the most the bones can ever display, even if we go into, let's say, material display viewport shading, it'll still only display the bones as wire. So that's great, now I can see both bones. And what I might do now is drag this tailbone back up to the bottom of the hand, or right down to the bottom of the actual mesh, which I didn't get quite right. Actually, that looks pretty good to me. The bones display differently when you're in pose mode versus edit mode. So that looks pretty good to me. What I want to make sure though is that this hand bone is not attached in any way, except for being in the same armature, to the rest of the rig, which means it should not have a parent. Right now, it's parent. If I go to the bone tab, you can see in the relations section, the parent is arm lower dot L. I don't want that. I don't want to be connected to anything else but still be in the same armature. So I'll click this little X, and as you can see, it sort of changed in appearance a little bit because it no longer has a parent, and that's great. The other place we want to make an IK target is the elbow, because if you can imagine if I wanted to animate my character doing the chicken dance, <laughs> where you basically wave your arms like a bird, uh, moving your elbows in and out, you want to be able to decide which direction your elbow should be pointed in. So what I'm going to do is go to my side view and select the nub that's the elbow joint. I believe I'm right here. So that's the lower arm, that's the upper arm, that's my elbow joint. And I'm going to extrude out that to make a new controller bone for the elbow. It's going to be the, basically what's called a pole target. Basically it makes the elbow point towards that bone no matter what. And we're going to set that up in the next video. So with that selected, I'll press E. I'll tap Y on my keyboard to go straight back. We don't have to make it very large, in fact, I'll make it quite short. And just like the with the hand IK bone, we're gonna name this bone elbow IK dot L. And we do not want it to have any parents, so I'm gonna select that and click on the X under the bone tab to get rid of its parent. And I'm actually gonna drag it a little bit farther away, because we don't want it to, whoops, why did it not work? click on that. Okay, we might have to right click on that again to make it separate. There we go. We want the elbow to point at this bone, but this bone should be farther away because the elbow will bend. Um, it's not an attached bone, it's going to be out in case you want it, your, your elbow to point at something farther away for whatever reason. Okay, I'll move it actually a little bit farther away, and that's great. It's called elbow IK dot L. What else do we need in this rig? Well, of course we need legs. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm not going to make hips. I'm not going to make like an elbow version of hips. I'm just going to make a separate bone starting up here. So I'll go back into object mode of the armature, go into edit mode of the mesh. Um, I'm going to go into wireframe mode so I can sleeve, see that face and select it. And I'll press shift S again to bring up my snap menu and we'll say cursor to selected, shift S cursor to selected. Let's press tab and then go back into the edit mode of the armature and I'll press shift A. And again, we get out a B bone. It's probably too wide, but we'll worry about that later. I'll drag the nub of the tail uh, down to his feet. And we want this to have three bones, a upper leg, a lower leg, and a uh, foot bone. So I'll select the bone, uh, W, subdivide, and we want two cuts to make three bones. The foot's gonna be quite short, so I'll grab that nub, put down to right about there. And then from here to here, the halfway mark maybe is right about there. Now we actually have a cut already in this mesh, so I'm gonna see where that is. It is right here. Do I wanna keep that? Um, well, I could actually slide them up. Well, let's grab, I'm gonna grab all three, so I'll hold Alt, right click, and then Shift and Alt and right click to grab all three of those and we're going to move them up a little bit to try to match basically where um, that is and that looks pretty good to me and we're going to, have to make some more cuts around here later but it's important to note that when you make or move geometry in your mesh we're actually now distorting the texture you can see that when you grab vertices and now distorts that texture because of that UV map that we made um, in the last few videos. So just be aware of that. We're going to have to re-unwrap and lay out the UV maps, but we can keep the same texture if we want. 
I'm not very much a fan of the one that I made, so maybe it's a good thing. All right, let's go back into edit mode of the armature, and we're going to do the same things we did down here. We're going to make a, um, a hand IK, or in this case a foot IK, and a knee IK bone. Let's select all three of these bones, and let's press um, Control-Alt-S. That again will make it narrower, just like the other bones. And we didn't even name these bones, so I'll select this one. It's going to be leg upper dot L, and this one's going to be leg lower dot L. And again, I name the bones with the um, name of the whole limb first, so I name it leg and then the section of it. That makes it easier to find if I'm searching for it somewhere else, uh, instead of saying, you know, um, lower leg, because then if you typed in lower, you would get the lower arms and lower legs. But if you type in leg, you get just the leg bone. So it makes it easier. It's going to be foot.l. And we need to create a foot IK target. So let's go ahead and select the ankle joint. And I'm just going to make sure that's OK from the side. And we'll tap E and Z and move it straight down. I'll select that bone, uh, Control alt s and make it thicker. And we'll name this bone uh, foot IK dot L. And of course, we want to have no parent. We want it to be sort of separate. So I'll click that button or the X to get rid of the parent under the bone tab. So now we have a good foot IK bone. We need a knee IK bone. Um, so let's go ahead and select that knee joint, E and Y. And we're going to bring it forward this time. For the arm, we brought it to the back because that's the way that the elbow points. If you you know move your hand up, your elbow moves back or bends toward the, uh, behind you, uh, but your knees bend towards the front of you. So we want them to be pointing in that direction. Um, this is going to be called knee ik dot l, and we need to detach it. So I'll click this X, and just like the elbow, we want it to be farther away. So I'll drag that bone out um, to be where the knee is going to be pointing to, and again we'll put it a little ways away. In fact, I'm going to move this one farther back as well. What I might actually do is select those two bones and press Control alt s I want them to be more like cubes, um, so I'll make them fatter with Control alt s All right, I think we are almost done here. Um, we are not going to duplicate the bones over to the left side. I've been, I'll show you an easy way of doing that until we actually get all the constraints for IK set up. One more thing I want to do here, though, is I want to make a hip bone. Now, why am I making a hip bone as opposed to this pelvis bone? Well, if I go into pose mode uh, of this armature, and let's say I want him to, um, you know, sway back and forth. Well, if I grab this bone from the front view and I press R, he does sway. But this actually isn't the way that we as humans would, would, would sway back and forth. We actually rotate our hips from the top of the hips and not the bottom of our hip bones. So what I want to basically be able to do is, you know, if you imagine this Minecraft character doing like a Latin dance, like the cha-cha or whatever Latin dance uh, lets you uh, swing your hips a lot. We want him to swing his hips from up here, not at the very bottom of his pelvis. In other words, so he could do that sort of a, a movement. So what I'm going to do is go back into edit mode, and I'm actually going to du duplicate this pelvis bone. So I'll press Shift D, duplicate, and I'm going to right click to put it back in the same spot. And immediately I want to make this different from the other bone. So I'll press uh, Control Alt S and make it thicker. And then this bone is going to be called the hips. So again, Control Alt S makes the bone um, thicker, and then we have we can see the difference between the pelvis bone and the hips bone. Now we want to flip this bone around. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to uh, scale it at negative 100%. So I'll tap. In fact, before I do that, I need to make sure that this bone has no parent. It doesn't. Okay. So now I'll tap uh, with this bone selected in edit mode. Uh, S and then Z, and then negative one, enter. Now, when we, I'll do that again, just in case you missed it. S, Z, negative one, enter. And that flipped it on the Z axis. So now if I go back into pose mode, and I press R, it rotates from the top, because by pressing S, Z, negative one, enter, we flipped it, basically made it 100% 
scaled negative on the z-axis to flip it around. You'll see that again when we flip the entire left side of his bones over to his right bones again. So now we have this bone, um, but it's not really doing anything for our mesh, of course, because we haven't parented the mesh to this armature yet. But we want these legs to actually be um, connected to the hip bone and not this bone. In fact, we haven't parented this one at all. So let's go back into edit mode and I'm going to select the upper leg bone, hold shift, select the hips larger bone and press control P and we're going to select keep offset. This is the control P make parent menu. So keep offset. We want them to be separate. But now if we grab the hips and we go into pose mode and I rotate the hips, you'll see that the hips now control where the legs are, which is what we want. But I'm going to make one little improvement here. You'll see that the hips are rotating to match the rotation of the hips bone. I'm going to undo that uh, with Alt R. And uh, we're going to go back into edit mode. And I want to select the upper leg bone. I want its parent to be the hips, but I don't want the rotation to be inherited uh, from the parent bone. So right now, because this is checked, it rotates too. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to uncheck inherent rotation. So now if I go back into pose mode, and rotate the hips, you can see that we can get a nice sort of hip rocking action there. Now, one of the thing that's really important when you're making IK target bones, um, we've made one, two, three, four, and we have another bone here that we don't really want to control the mesh, is we wanted to disable deform on these IK bones and bones that we don't want to have actually control vertices in the mesh. So I'm going to select the pelvis bone, the smaller one, and uncheck deform under my uh, bone uh, tab. And this is in the deform section. We don't want it to, to deform the mesh. Same thing with the IK bones. We don't want them to have influence or any pull on any vertices in the mesh. So I'll unselect deform for all of these bones, making sure that they're all unchecked. Okay. I think we are almost there. Um, what I do want though is for this pelvis bone, I'm just going to make sure I got all of them. Yes, I think I did. I don't want this pelvis bone to sort of be on its own. If I drag the pelvis, you know, the legs move along with it, but it's not attached to the spine or any part of the spine at all. I actually want it to be a child of the hips bone. Um, and that is because I'm still going to use the hips bone, but it's going to act like more of a controller to move his whole body around while keeping his feet in the same place. So back into edit mode of the armature, I'm actually going to parent the, the hips bone to this bone, but then I'm going to dis disable um, rotation and scale in case we mess with those things. So I'll select the hips bone, hold shift, select the pelvis bone, control P, and keep offset, very important to do. And I'm going to select my hips bone and uncheck inherent rotation, inherent scale, uh, ro location will stay the same. So now, if I go back into pose mode and I want to move the whole armature, I can grab you know, that bone right there. It's not going to move the targets and we'll kind of deal with that in the next video. But now if I move the hips, uh, I get a nice action there. So let's go ahead and see if there's anything else that I need to do before we take a pause and we move on to the next video. I have a bunch of bones and they're all connected. Oh, the one thing I want to do that's still here is I need to make a controller bone for the entire mesh, including all the IK targets. The reason why I want to do that is there are cases where when you're first starting your scene, you're going to want to move your character to a certain location, but not have anything left behind. In other words, we want a bone sort of under him that lets us grab the entire thing, including all these IK targets and hand IK bones. So what I'll do is in edit mode, I'm going to grab the pelvis bone and I'm going to duplicate it. So shift D and I'll press Z on my keyboard to move it straight down. And with that bone selected, I'll make it thicker with control alt S and I'm going to name this one on my bone tab. I'm going to name it controller. There we go. This is going to be the parent of everything, including the pelvis, including all of the IK bones. So I'll select the pelvis, I'll select all of the IK bones, and lastly I'll select the controller bone and I'll press control P and of course keep offset. And you'll see the connection lines go, you know, from all of these bones down to this bone. That's great. So now in pose mode, 
I can grab just that bone and move everything and notice that the IK bones follow along. But if I grab that, say, the pelvis bone and grab it, the IK bones are left behind. That's exactly what we want. Let's just do a double check to make sure that everything is named the way we want to be named. We got knee IK, um, elbow IK dot L, um, hand IK, we've got hips, we've got pelvis, we've got spine, we've got ribs, we've got head. That looks pretty good to me. That's going to be it for this video. In the next video, we're going to be setting up all of the IK constraints to make everything work properly. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.